iconic symbol of the wild and an apex predator that we fear and admire. In our imaginations, they roam the jungle. But today, many tigers have never even seen the wild. The vast majority of them spend their lives in captivity. Princess is an American tiger, a distant relative of her wild ancestors. She doesn't even know how to hunt. Most tigers in America aren't found in zoos. They're privately owned. There are more than twice as many of them as the highly endangered wild tiger. This could change if new legislation is passed that would ban the private ownership and breeding of tigers. What are the issues surrounding captive tigers in America? And what does the future hold for their wild cousins? Tigers are one of the world's most popular animals. Everybody loves to see a tiger at the zoo. Even the scientists who work around them are impressed by their majesty. Ron Tilson is the senior conservation advisor at the Minnesota Zoo and a renowned expert on tigers. He spent many years tracking and studying them in the jungles of Asia. My heart beats faster every time I see one. Yeah, there is... Um, it's because everything... they represent everything. They are the icon of Asian wilderness. They are the most powerful cat, the largest cat. They are in my opinion, one of the most attractive cats. Um, but it's also the fact that essentially we have evolved as a species uh, with the tiger, and the tiger is one of the only animals on earth that preys and eats people. And when a tiger looks at a human being, I think the tiger sees us for exactly what we are. We are nothing more than a piece of meat. The tiger and the power it represents has always fascinated us. At the beginning of the 20th century, there were 100,000 tigers in the forests of Asia. The first tigers came to America as entertainers. Before zoos and circuses attempted to control their breeding, surplus animals found their way into private hands. Soon, everyone from the rich and famous to companies and sports teams wanted a piece of the big cat. For some Americans, like the character of Tony Montana in the movie Scarface, owning a tiger became a symbol of success. Martin Dins is a celebrity veterinarian and was one of the first to specialize in exotic animals. His talent and reputation led him to work for A-list stars like Michael Jackson and the magicians Siegfried and Roy. He witnessed firsthand the rise of the tiger population in America. The tiger pet phenomenon became a trend, I would say, in the early 60s. We could be driving in Beverly Hills and see a person driving a convertible with a tiger sitting up in the back seat. Or people owning a jaguar, a big jaguar, driving around in their jaguar with it. There were no import restrictions. There were no restrictions on the sale out of the pet shop of these kind of animals. You know, a little tiger cub is nice and cute. So people thought it would be fashionable. It was unique. They could show it off. And it was trendy then. The pet tiger phenomenon may have existed briefly in other parts of the world, but it never had the dimensions it's taken on in America. In the 1970s, actress Tippi Hedren, the star of Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, embarked on an unusual film project. She starred in the movie Roar, where actors and crew members rubbed shoulders with dozens of lions and tigers. I can't believe we did all that, that we were foolish enough to do it, so many of us were hurt, you know, that it was, uh, you know, uh, insanity. It was truly insane here. Tippi Hedren radically changed. She converted the Roar movie set into the Shambhala Preserve, a sanctuary for abused and neglected big cats. Her strong stance against private ownership 
has drawn attention to the issues facing captive and wild big cats. In the wild, tigers are threatened by habitat destruction and human encroachment. They've been hunted and poached for their skins. Most of all, they suffered from the illegal trade of their parts for use in traditional medicine. 97% of the species have been wiped out over the last 100 years. And with only 3,200 wild tigers left, they are facing a total crisis. Well, just about everything has been tried and just about everything has failed. Everyone is trying to think through how to go about making a future for tigers. And the bottom line is, is that we've failed uh, in every, um, every example. There is no one place you can put your finger and say, aha, here's the magic formula on how to save tigers. Tigers have been on the endangered species list since it was established. In 1973, it became illegal to import tigers born in the wild. So the tigers living in the United States today are American, born and raised. The population of captive tigers has been steadily growing. In the wild, a female spends a couple of years teaching her three or four cubs how to hunt and fend for themselves. But in captivity, she can breed every year. Today, most American tigers are privately owned, and some people still keep them as pets. Susanna Kukol and Scott Shoemaker live in the small town of Pahrump, Nevada, with their six tigers. Hey, baby. I know, I know. Mama's girl, huh? If your definition of pet is something you throw food at and it's nice and docile, okay, then that's not a tiger. That's my girl. That's my girl. Oh, that's my girl. In the cage, it's, it's just fun. Outside, that's when it's like, okay, we are going for the walk. We are going to go for the training. So outside, it's like you are in school. In the cage, it's, okay, it's, it's their place. It's their home. Oh, somebody's being killed. So basically, that's the golden rule. You don't push them into any serious training in the cage. And you, you never, ever turn the back on a tiger. But not all captive tigers are pets or collector's items. Some private owners see themselves as conservationists and believe America is the tiger's Noah's Ark. Patty Perry runs her own Center for Conservation and Education in Southern California. She is also the vice president of the Feline Conservation Federation, the largest organization promoting private ownership and breeding of captive exotic cats in the United States. It's far from perfect, but in our world today, we have to have captive breeders, private captive breeders. We have to have private educators because the zoos can't do it all. You don't get that kind of contact and that kind of one-on-one -on -one at a zoo. They have been poached. They have been hunted for their pelts and for their internal organs, and we have very, very low populations. This is Prana. The